This is our Forex blog for October 3rd, 2011. And this is uh, one of the first things we do when we start trading is we look at the currency meter to find out which currencies are the strongest, which ones are the weakest. And we want to buy the strongest versus the weakest. Now, common sense would dictate, but we live in a world that lacks common sense for the most part. <clears throat> so I'll go over it. The real-time strength, when that matches the intermediate time frame uh, strength, which is a little color strip underneath that, which matches the daily trend, which is directly underneath that, which matches the weekly trend, which is underneath that, which matches the monthly trend. You know, these trends tend to last longer than when, for example, a weak currency like the Australian has a little bit of strength. That strength is less likely to continue for a couple hours. You know, that's the common sense of it. Uh, I want to always try to point stuff out just in case somebody is watching this that doesn't have any common sense, you know, and says, oh, the Australian's strong right here, I'm going to buy it, and they wonder why they don't, you know, make money. <clears throat> Trend strengths tend to continue longer when time frames all line up. In other words, if for whatever reason the dollar is strong on a daily, weekly, and monthly, and it's strong right now, you know, there's a reason for it. It's, there's a reason why it's been going up over the last day, the last week, the last month. And, you know, not only is it going up, but it's going up more than other currencies. That's why it's darker green than the yen. Even though in real time right here, the yen had more real time strength, you know, right now than the dollar. But you might choose to buy the dollar versus another pair just because it has a stronger weekly or monthly. So scrolling back right before you know today started, right before midnight, you can see a little bit of weakness in the euro there. The pound you might want to avoid even though it has some uh, real-time weakness because the daily, weekly, monthly trends up. The uh, New Zealand down here uh, has a little bit of weakness before midnight. Unfortunately, that doesn't continue. Sometimes currencies are down so much that they... Uh, their trends don't always continue. The euro doesn't uh, only has a, a monthly trend that's uh, up. The daily, weekly, monthly was uh, down. So when this was some weakness right here, uh, you might have sold it against the dollar and then waited maybe until one uh, and started selling it again. So let's just look at the euro dollar. Here it is before uh, a couple hours before midnight. You can see it went down. Our IntelliStop does a pretty good job of getting you uh, out of you know, trends pretty much at the right time, locks in the majority of the profit most of the time. And once the currency is down near the lower bands, usually it retraces back up a little bit. A lot of times it finds resistance at the hourly, especially when you have counter trend signals right there. So you might have given this a short right here. If you took some of the other shorts on this little pullback right here, you can see you would have lost about eight pips, another eight pips. And this, you know, trade if you shorted at the hourly fell about 20. It had uh, another double top here at the hourly and came down. You would have lost on that one. And then we had a false breakout above the hourly, came back down. You can see uh, pulled back about 40 pips. And this trade right here uh, went about uh, 70 pips. <clears throat> and the low today was the Fibonacci profit target level I did last night. All of our mentor students get access to this. It shows up on your chart. And that's you know typically where the markets stall in reverse. But nonetheless, you know, Trading is about a bunch of small little tiny losses, some small and medium and intermediate sized wins, and the occasional 60 to 80 pip win. Uh, if you're not in a trade, you know, the, the hourly did act as resistance here, here, false breakout right here, here, and here. And the only time it busted through was right here. You, you, you know, had some very tiny uh, wins and tiny losses, uh, but eventually the, the trend continued. Weak euro, strong dollar, you know, it's that simple. The yen was also strong, so you can see a couple hours before midnight when the euro broke the previous day's low, it tended to trend down. The lower containment bands tend to be where the market finds some support. So nonetheless, uh, our IntelliStop got you out of this almost with every, every pip possible. You can see you made about 40 pips on that one. Usually you want to wait for a little bit more of a pullback, so you, know, you probably wouldn't have wanted to sell here. But right here you went short, and you can see that made money. Rallied up here, made money. This one here lost money. This one here uh, made a decent amount. And this one, uh, on the pullback, somewhere around 17, out here at 70, that made 40-something pips. So the point is, when you're wrong, you lose 5 to 10 pips, or sometimes have a break-even, and sometimes trades that don't work, you end up making a little bit on, uh, you know, 3, 5, 7, 8 pips occasionally, or 12. But, you know, when you're trading in the direction of the most likely trend, uh, if you take every trade, most of the time you're going to get, you know, the big win. The dollar and the yen are the two strongest ones. The pound's weekly, monthly trend is also strong, but it was consistently weak today. 
you don't know in real time that this, this weakness is going to continue. But typically, when a strong currency is showing strength and all the time frames up, you know, it does tend to continue, or, or it continues more often. So you want to play the odds. <clears throat> so that's one thing you do to pick the currency. Buy the strong versus the weak and sell the weak versus the strong. And also uh, trade the one that has the most distance to the next support resistance. You can see here at 7, this was very strong. The pound was also. The only downside of the pound was the weekly monthly trend was up. So if you do see that, uh, and you want to trade the pound versus, at that point, the yen was stronger than the dollar, uh, you know, just accept a smaller profit target most of the time. Here's 7. You can see it was right near the lower containment band, right near a Fibonacci area. Area. I would not, with my own money, risk this trade because, you know, you got all this support underneath here. Once it comes down there and it bangs around the support area and you don't really get a nice bounce up, at this point right here, it's a pretty decent uh, play. Because this resistance area has been hit and it hasn't caused the bounce. And so when it breaks through there, it's likely to go to the next area, which is a decent number of pips down. Here's the Fibonacci profit targets down here. If you waited for this little pullback right here, got short around 05. You have a profit target down here at 55. It's 50 pips away. I'll risk 10 pips with a very real and very high probability chance of making, you know, 30 to 50. It doesn't always go to your profit target. But the profit target is there nonetheless, and right underneath there we have uh, a monthly pivot level, one of our trading zones, and the 1.618 FIB target too, which you can see was the, the low to the pip. Anytime, you know, and if you miss that trend down, when a currency is underneath the 1. Point, or the 2.0 white containment band right here, usually if there's major support down there, you're going to get a bounce. So most of the time, you know, down here at this uh, resistance or support area, 45, you're very likely to get a 15 to 25 pip bounce, probably 70, 80 percent of the time. Um, this is not a, a method I teach in class that much, but it is a trade I take probably two or three times a week, just because this is the time of the day that I tend to trade. And if I miss the trend, you know, and it's down enough, I'll take a chance at a counter trend trade, risking six to 12 pips, and most of the time making 15 to 30. And sometimes when you get into a counter trend that's down, it just explodes up you know, sometimes 30 and 50 pips. So, but on average, you're going to make one and a half to two times more than your risk. And, it, and in my experience, it works about 65, 70% of the time, um, you know, buying when it's at least 20 or 30 pips underneath uh, the lower white containment band, especially when there's a cluster of support. Any particular area that tends to have buying and selling orders stacked at it, like the previous days, weeks and months, high and low, Weekly and monthly pivots, pre, uh, 10, 20, 50, and 200 day moving average. Uh, when there's two or three areas, all within a 5 to 15 pip range, uh, you know, smart, whatever traders are, that are trading on the way down there realize that this area is there and they tend to exit and take their profits there. That, not only is there buy, level, buy uh, orders there, but traders that are short are tend, tend to want to exit there because they don't think it's going to bust through the first time. Or at least they watch it, and if it doesn't bust through, they quickly get out. That causes a flood of buying, and that's you know the, basically the reason why uh, buying uh, way underneath or selling way above the upper containment band uh, makes money. Most traders, especially if they're new, just want to focus on you know the ones that are weak. The Swiss had some strength here, and then uh, at 7:30 it went weak. Most of the time frames are down, so at 7:30 you know you have the Swiss. I mean the yen that's strong. Also, the dollar, dollar Swiss uh, makes sense to look for buys at uh, 7.30, you know, 7.30 and after. Basically, this had pulled down, found support at the hourly, kind of had a false breakout underneath their previous day's highs right here, and you can see it went back up, pulled back. You had a chance to make maybe 10 pips here, and this trade right here, if you got in, the trailing stop kept you all the way in until uh, up here at 60, so you would have uh, made about 40 or so pips on that. Notice Fibonacci profit target level, you know, that I do the night before, tends to be a very high probability place for the market to stall, and it did. But, you know, most of the trades are going to be small wins, small losses, break-evens, uh, and occasional big win. You can make money, you know, taking a lot of small wins and losses if you have a high win rate. But if your win, win rate is lower, then you need to hold, you know, the trades that work to make three times, four times, five times more than your risk in order to make money overall. If you're 40% winning and you're making 5 and 10 pips most of the time and losing 10 pips when you're wrong, you're going to lose money. 
you need the occasional 30, 50, 80 pip win to push you into profitable territory. You know, if you're not catching those big wins, then you got to be more selective on your trades and, you know, just avoid a lot of trades. You know, only t cherry pick the ones that are most likely to work.